Hello friends. Today uh, again we are meeting and uh, this day the purpose is to tell you about one more robustness test. Yesterday we discussed about first robustness test which is two stage least square regression. Now today I am going to tell you about one more test, one more method by which you can supplement your ordinary least square regression results. This particular test or this particular methodology is known as propensity score matching method. This method actually is based on the propensity scores that are assigned to the treated or the non-treated variables. So here in this case, I must tell you that we have to convert our main independent variable into binary form. We put one for the variable, like for example, let me tell you about uh, this what I'm saying with the help of the data. So this is the data that is with me and here if you look at the standard deviation of recommendation yesterday we discussed about this right standard deviation of recommendation is our main independent variable right and other words the control variables control independent variables but here this is my main independent variable so this main independent variable is converted to the dummy form like this in which uh, uh, this dummy it's this variable is taking a dummy form of 1 when it is more than 0 0.5 and taking 0 if it is less than 0 0.5. For example, for 0 0.46, which is less than 0 0.5, it assumes a value of 0 and so and so forth, right? So this is how we convert our independent variable to the dummy form. And then now we are eligible to apply... Uh, propensity score matching technique now how we can do that simple you just have to go to the linear model and relate it here you have to go to the treatment effects then go to propensity score matching here you have everything with you like propensity score matching you can select different other kinds of treatment effects we call treatment uh, effects maybe regression adjustment i'm going to talk about every one of them in my next videos so today i'm just talking about uh, propensity score matching so we are going to select it now here here we have a logistic model uh, so maybe you can choose between uh, these three uh, i can tell you about the difference between these two when we use logistic model how to decide between actually logistic and the probit model so depends on uh, the data set that is with you if your data set is large you should go for profit model because profit model you actually assumes normal distribution of errors where it is not the case with the logistic model so for large data set uh, if because uh, for the law of large numbers you might have heard about or might have remember that it says that if there are large number of there is a large number of sample size as the sample size increases your uh, distribution of errors becomes more normal as a, your 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 data also becomes more normal and that's why for large data set you, you may choose a probit model for applying process score matching whereas here in this case in my case actually here the data set is a little bit less we just have 62 variables, 62 data sets for uh, this, these particular variables. 
so I'm not going to choose probit model and it is not robust to use probit model in this case so I'm going to use logistic model right now here what what is my outcome variable yesterday I told you uh, and uh, today also I'm going to use pre-market underpricing as my outcome variable yesterday we applied OLS regression on it now as well as we, we applied uh, uh, two stage least square regression in my yesterday video whereas today I'm going to use another robustness check by using propensity score matching on the same variable right now my treatment variable what it would be here my treatment variable is in the dummy form which is dummy of standard deviation recommendation now there are some treatment independent also I'm going to use the same independent variable control variables which I used yesterday one more yesterday I used then these four variables and other uh, things are going to remain the same there's no need to change anything we need robust standard errors reporting also it depends on what type of reporting you need to have but keep it as it is maximization advanced says nothing needs to be changed here and then you can just click on ok right so this is the results uh, that is with us so what it says is there is a particular difference between um, in, on the pre-market underpricing when we have, when we have a less uh, standard deviation of recommendation and when there is a more standard deviation of recommendation right and the difference between them is this much this coefficient actually tells you about the difference and this difference is statistically significant also at one five percent uh, level of significance the z value is minus 2.47 this negative co coefficient says that if uh, there is a standard deviation in recommendation if there is a higher uh, uh, recommendation dispersion then it is different from the lower spaced uh, dispersion of recommendation by this this particular number right so this actually says about the propensity score Prop propensity score also uh, is actually validating the main results of ordinary least square regression right so I think you might have understood about uh, propensity score matching today so in my next video I'm going to tell you more about the treatment effects other treatment effects model too which actually supplements the main uh, OLS regression results. So friends, this is all uh, that we have today. Next time we are going to discuss more on research, more on the robustness check models and uh, stay tuned for more exciting videos on research using Stata. Right? So thank you so much for giving your time. Thanks. Thanks a lot.